everyone. I am Arlette Hardy, blogger and joy strategist at chasing-joy.com. Back with my weekly bump date. Um, just to give you guys an update on how pregnancy is going. I am 31 weeks and six days pregnant after a two plus year journey um, and infertility diagnosis diagnosis to become a single mother by choice so this week's update i'm going to talk to you about what happened this week week 31 and we're going to go over um gender predictions so that's exciting um but first we're going to do the stats like we always do so like I said, this week I'm 31 weeks and six days. The baby is estimated to be about the size of a coconut or a, um, a bunch of romaine lettuce. And that's about three and a third pounds. We already know from past videos and ultrasounds that my baby is running a little big and a little long. So I think my baby's bigger than three and a third pounds by now. Um, and the apps estimate about 17 and a half inches. So who knows, but that's the estimate for weeks uh, 31. The best part of week 31, I would say, um, well, there were two, two good parts. Um, I went to a luncheon last Saturday and if you follow me on social media, um, I'm most active on Facebook and Instagram. You saw that I um, posted a picture in a really pretty red dress that was a maternity dress um, that I got from Pink Blush. And I've been saving it because I knew I would have to you know, wear something nice for that. And I felt really pretty. So that was a highlight of the week. And uh, another highlight... Um, I'm not going to really go over it too much, but I got my baby book from Mushy Books. And like, like I said, if you follow me on Instagram, um, I did a whole like 30 something minute long unboxing of the book and I went through all the pages. The, the cool thing about the book is you can tailor the baby book to whatever your family situation is so they have books um you could tailor for two moms or two dads or a traditional family or a family with um adoption or a single mother by choice family like me um and you can select certain pages to be in there and not in there it's like i have a page in there for the donor information and then the, there was a page um where I guess it would kind of be like a family tree. Excuse me. And it just has, for me, my sake, just the mom side. So that's neat. Um, so I really, really like the book. And it's from Mushy Books. And they did not pay me to say that or to do the unboxing. Um, so it's not a sponsored uh, post or share in any way. But that was um, an awesome part of the week getting the book and liking it so much um worst parts of the week <laughs> uh i will say the same luncheon which is kind of funny um i felt really pretty and was having a nice time and then i started to have pain and on my lower back started to ache a little bit and then my stomach started to hurt and it would hurt for a long time like maybe like five seven ten minutes and then it would go away for a few minutes and then it would come back and it was really uncomfortable and um at one point i got up to go to the restroom but it was mostly so that i could walk around and i felt better and then i came back and they did it again so i ended up cutting out of the luncheon just a little bit early i normally stay to the very very end um uh, but this time you know when i could tell they were winding down and they were only doing like a few more of the door prizes I said my goodbyes and then I had planned to make run an errand on the way home and I just came straight home and of course I got home and I felt fine and that never happened again so I'm not really sure what that was about but that was really painful and I was like oh man 
if these are the Braxton Hicks, which I don't know that they were because the fact that it lasted so long, I was like, these these suckers really hurt. So only can imagine, um, you know, labor. So that sucked. That was a, a worst moment of the week. And then another worst moment of the week, I'll say, would be Wednesday night. Um, it was funny during the day Wednesday. I fell asleep three different times. I fell asleep at my desk at work. I don't think anyone saw me, but oh well, if they did. Um, then I got home and I sat down and fell asleep. And then I had to like wake myself up so that I could have dinner um, because I have to make sure I'm eating because of the gestational diabetes. I have to eat on time and stuff. And then after dinner, I fell asleep. Uh, when I was supposed to be, I was planning to do some work for uh, for the blog for Chase and Joy, and I fell asleep, didn't get anything done. So I woke myself up so I could go to bed, and I felt really tired, and then I got in bed and was wide awake. And I had just read in the book that they gave us um, at the childbirth class how insomnia is very common. As you get closer to the end and I was like oh my gosh this, this is happening <laughs> so I was like wide awake for hour for hours and then of course while I'm laying there I start to get anxious and then I'm like oh I hear my heartbeat is my heart racing I hope you know hoping I wasn't having the experience from the previous week and I didn't but I was just getting anxious and anxious and then finally around three something I was like oh you know what? I should take a Benadryl I'm like, but then I'm supposed to be up at five something. So I said, well, I'll take just like a third of a pill. Like I have a pill cutter. So I did that and then I was able to go to sleep. And then I woke up around five and I was still really tired. So I just text my boss and I'm very, very thankful that my job is, is so flexible. And I think for the most part, I'm a good employee. So, um, you know, I guess people don't feel I'm taking advantage or whatever. But I just texted my boss and I was like, listen, I had another pretty rough night. I said, so, you know, I am going to come in, but I'm going to take my time and I'm going to be late. And so I then went back to sleep for another couple of hours because I, I knew there'd be no way I'd make it through the day if I didn't get more sleep. So that kind of sucked, but nothing was wrong. I just think, I, I think I just had the insomnia or maybe... I fell asleep too many times during the day. I don't know, but that sucked. Anyway, on to the other stats. Um, aversions, nothing. I'm able to eat whatever right now. I'm not having any issues. My sleep, I would have to say is hit or miss because like that night that I just mentioned sucked, but last night, which was Thursday, going into Friday, I slept so well. And I felt so good <laughs> that I slept so well. So it's really kind of hit or miss right now. Um, my medications, I'm taking all the same stuff that I've been taking for the last few weeks. Um, my prenatal vitamin, also vitamins E, C, and D, um, along with baby aspirin and Synthroid, because I do have a thyroid problem. And um, they added iron a couple weeks ago. I don't take the iron every day. I'm taking it like every other day, every couple days. Um, my pregnancy symptoms. Um, so I have had my lower back hurting here or there, um, depending like if I guess I've been sitting too long or how I've been sitting. Um, my feet pretty much swell every day now. My bed looks like some kind of mountain terrain with all the pillows. Um, because I, I, I did not buy a pregnancy pillow at this point. I, I doubt that I will, but I pretty much sleep with a pillow on each side. Sometimes I wedge it under my belly. A lot of times I don't have to. Sometimes I'll put it between my knees. A lot of times I don't have to. But then I, now I've also stuffed pillows by under my feet, underneath the fitted sheet so that they stay in place so that my feet can be elevated at night so the swelling can go down by the morning. So, yeah, my cats seem to really like it, though. They, like, prop themselves up in between these, like, little pillow hills. Um, but anyway, yeah, so feet swelling daily. And now my hips ache sometimes. Not when I wake up or trying to sleep, but, like, sometimes I'm trying to, you know, walk around. And um, 
I noticed that lower uh, pelvic pain, I guess like right under my stomach, like the ligament pain. A lot of days I don't have it and then some days I do, but I almost always have it the worst on days that I work. And one day this week when I was going into work, a coworker was going on at the same time and she actually offered to carry my things for me. And I actually accepted the offer. So she carried in my lunch and my computer. So I didn't have to make two trips um, to try not to carry too much heavy stuff. And I still had the pain. So that was one theory out the window because I thought it was from carrying around my computer. And so, yeah, it wasn't that. <laughs> um, so those are my symptoms. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about movement. So... I noticed this week that the baby's movements have changed. They haven't slowed down or anything, but it's before it was like thumps and kicks and there's a, a, still a little bit of that, but now it's much more like these rolling motions. And I guess the baby's stretching where I, I can start to feel like, like it's pushing out in several areas, like at the top and then the bottom, like maybe it's like yawning, stretching or whatever. So different kind of movements now. Um, exercise pretty much the same as last week I have been trying to get up and walk especially on days when I go into the office like after my meals after lunch after I eat breakfast so I eat breakfast at work um, but that's pretty much it um, my mood my mood has basically been really good um, I mean, I've had moments of anxiety, like I was talking about the other night, and um, but I haven't been like cranky or you know angry or um, I haven't really been sad, like a, a, a teeny bit sad, and, and and I don't even I don't even know if sad is the right word. Um, just you know, my baby shower's coming up, and like part of me feels like oh, my parents should be there. And that's not the case. My parents have passed away. If you're new to the channel, um, my mom was very much on board and supportive of my single mom by choice plans. And she passed away um, right at my, I think it was like my eighth, yeah, my eighth slash ninth IUI because I think I did the back to back IUI that time. And she passed away. So, you know, a little bit missing them. But overall, my mood, I think, has been um, been really good. Um, who have I told? So, like I said last week, everyone knows. I will say, though, this week was the first time that I felt like a stranger noticed that I was pregnant and acknowledged it. Now, I don't know if it counts that I was going into the OBGYN. But, like I said, it's an OBGYN. So, just because you're going there doesn't mean you have to be pregnant. Um, but the lady looked at me and looked at my belly and said, oh, I think you're going in here and like held the door and we kind of laughed. So that was nice um, because like you'll see when I do the bump shot, like I don't feel like I'm that much bigger than normal. Um, so I wonder, do I just look heavy to people or can they like tell that it's like a baby <laughs> if they don't know me? Um so it was nice that someone could tell that it was a stranger. Um, I'll show you guys my purchases, what I bought this week in a minute. Um, I'll come back to that. Uh, what am I missing right now? I am missing alcohol. <laughs> I don't know. This week, I guess, on social media, several people have been talking about like different drinks. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that sounds really good. I could go for that and so this was this was an odd week i don't typically miss alcohol but i miss alcohol and i'm missing carbs and i'm really excited that my baby shower is in uh basically now a day and a half and i'm gonna eat cake i don't care about this gestational diabetes for that one day i'm gonna eat cake and enjoy myself um and then get get back right back to <laughs> the restrictions uh, but I do miss alcohol and I miss carbs. And that leads me to the next question. What am I looking forward to? So obviously I'm looking forward to the baby shower. That will include the gender reveal. And I'm going to make every attempt to post that on Facebook. 
and Instagram to like do a live. Um, so that will be exciting. And um, I'm also looking forward to my nursery getting done. Um, the contractor did start last week. I don't remember if I said that in the video or one of the many videos last week where I completely screwed up my editing um, or, or my lack of editing. I completely screwed up shooting the video. But so I don't remember if I mentioned that, but the contractor did start, but then he had to go out of town this week. So I'm really looking forward to it being done so I can start to put things in there and like really feel like I'm getting ready and like the house is can be more organized. Um, and then lastly, I'm looking forward to going on maternity leave uh, because it is hard to be pregnant at work. Um, and I think I've been doing okay, but like it's hard, you know, with even with the gestation diabetes, it's hard. Like I have to eat at certain times and build my blood sugar at my desk. I probably shouldn't be doing that. I'm waiting for someone to see me and like freak out. Um, you know, constantly having to go to the bathroom, being slow to walk places, and then just mentally, sometimes you feel kind of like you're in a fog, or like you have a pregnancy brain, you don't remember things. So, you know, it is it is challenging to be pregnant at work. So I, I am very much looking forward to um, maternity leave and the time off. Um, all right, so I'll show you guys the purchases that I made this week. So I showed you already the book. Hopefully you got a chance to see that um, unboxing on Instagram. So you guys know I live in Philly and we won the Super Bowl. So, of course, I had to get baby joy chaser a little super bowl championship onesie which is cute that'll that'll work for girl or boy um but i was excited to get that and i actually got myself something too that said that i got a nightgown and um it actually looks like it fit i haven't tried it on but you never know i got this from just like a uh a Instagram brand. I saw it in my feed and I was like, that's really cute. I'm going to buy that. So I got that. And then these things are all from Carter's. I told you guys I went to Carter's. They were having that big sale. I ended up going online because I signed up for their perks program and um, bought a few more things online. They were from the same sale. So these are just... Um, I don't even know what you call it. I guess like pajamas. Does it say? <laughs> I don't know. I'll learn. This is newborn size. I, I don't think I bought too much stuff newborn size. I think this is the first thing I bought that wasn't like a onesie or like some kind of themed shirt. Like a holiday or like the Super Bowl or like the Temple onesie. I thought this was cute. It says Little Peanut, which is cute because, you know, Peanut is ours. My cat. And then this one just has little elephants on it. And boy or girl can wear gray. And one thing that I saw, I noticed is really cute, which I didn't know. It has these little, and I don't, I don't think I can really show you from where I'm sitting. Um, but it, it like folds over a little bit over the sleeve. So I guess it comes like a little mitten to protect them from their fingernails. I thought that was cute and I didn't know it had that so that's a nice little feature so I like these I guess I guess it's a pajama I don't know I guess I, I guess once I, the baby gets here and I'm going through all this clothes and I get used to shopping more I'll learn all the, the proper names <laughs> for the baby stuff um, and I got more more onesies uh because someone told me you can never have enough onesies because of all the blowouts and spills and spitting up and i'm not going to take this one out because they're just white and plain these are three months size um yeah so some so you can never have enough too many onesies and then there'll be days where i won't like the baby won't get dressed but they'll be like hanging out maybe in the onesie um, and then these are just receiving blankets, um, four in a pack. I thought this one was cute because it has ABCs on it and whenever the nursery is done, I hope that will be my theme. 
ABCs. And then this one was cute too. Um, it's just like a green and blue and like white with uh, whales and I don't even know what else this is on here. <laughs> I guess like they're not sea creatures, but like whales and like a cloud and trees. I guess nature stuff. And so this stuff was all I got. Also, I got the two sets of receiving blankets, the onesie and the pajamas, and that was thirty six dollars. So I thought that was pretty good. So those were my purchases. And uh, before I do the bump shot, and before we get to the gender reveal, uh, it was just a couple comments and um. There were no real questions from this week's from you guys from last week that I saw in the um on the YouTube videos but um there were a couple com one comment one person was saying how she's very very afraid of getting a gestational diabetes diagnosis um because she has a lot of risk factors like that I was talking about last week and so I just wanted to say um I'm not going to tell you not to be afraid of it because, you know, I don't believe in tell people how to feel. However, um, keep the big picture in mind. Um, no one wants to get a gestational diabetes diagnosis. However, getting the diagnosis can help you to take better care of your baby, which is what I'm trying to keep in mind when, you know, I'm missing cake and I'm missing having a Pepsi. Um, because, you know, there are risks that can affect the baby if you have too much sugar in your body and getting the diagnosis can help you to manage that. So, you know, try to keep the big picture in mind. I was talking to a coworker and I was telling her I got the diagnosis and she was saying how she thought that she had it on her previous pregnancy, but... They said she didn't. However, she felt like she was constantly thirsty, which is a symptom of, you know, having too much sugar in your system. And her baby ended up being born at like being like 10 pounds, which is pretty big. So I don't know if she did or didn't, but like I know I don't want a 10 pound baby and I don't want my baby to have low blood sugar when it's born or um, to not be able to have a vaginal delivery because the baby's too big which are all things that can happen with the gestational diabetes. So I want to say, you know, if you have risk factors for it, um, I know you won't want to have it, but know that like getting the diagnosis is something that can help you and help your baby as opposed to not getting diagnosed. And, and if, if you do have it, it can be trouble later. So um, that's all I wanted to say on that. And then lastly... Um, I meant to mention this previous video, but I totally forgot. So one of the reasons that I share my journey here on YouTube, um, to become a single mother by choice, um, is because one, I'm a blogger. So like, you know, my whole life is kind of like an open book in a way. Um, but I'm basically a writer. I'm not necessarily a, um, a YouTuber in, in general. I didn't start out that way. But I decided to share my journey because when I was contemplating becoming a single mom by choice and trying to do my due diligence and my research and looking for people who had been through similar things, um, I could not find very many. And I definitely did not, could not find many women of color. Um, and I was in like the private um single mother by choice forums where I saw many many women you know I'm sure there are like hundreds of women who are part of that community if not more and many women of color but no one was talking about it like publicly until I found Boston Girl TV and so I watched her videos um followed her journey I think when I started watching her journey, I think she had just had her daughter, whose name is Ava. She talks, she tells her name on her videos. So I haven't found her a long time. And then, you know, I felt like, you know what? Let me add my voice so that it's not just one person um, of color. And now 
since the, it took me a couple of years, last couple of years, there's many more of us, several of us that, you know, I watch some of you guys, you guys watch me, and I think it's great. But I started out watching Boston Girl TV, and I still watch her. So her daughter um, has autism. I, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. And Boston Girl TV did a video where she was expressing how much she wants her daughter to talk. She's nonverbal. And so I just wanted to ask everyone to pray, to join me in praying for Boston Girl and Ava, that her baby will at the right time be able to talk because I'm sure if you're watching this channel you um, want to have a child or are pregnant or are thinking about parenthood in some kind of way and so I'm sure you can relate to wanting to one day hear your child's voice and so that's what Boston Girl TV wants and so I'm praying that for her and because I believe in prayer and I know many of you have prayed for me in this journey. Like I just wanted to ask you guys to pray for her as well that she'll hear her daughter speak. And I hope she doesn't mind that I put this in the video but um, definitely very good intentions. And I think it's okay because she did a video saying um, that she wants to hear her speak. Um, or she did a blog post. One of the, I, don't, I actually don't remember right now. But either way, she put it out there. So I'm just um, asking you guys to join me in praying for her. So now on to the gender reveal. And I really hope that this video does not cut off like last time. That would really suck. Um, but anyway, so I looked up several different gender um, predictors. Sorry, I said on to the gender reveal. On to the gender predictions. Um, from Old Wives Tale. So I looked up, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So let's kind of run through them. And, um, oh, I'll do the bump shot now and then we'll run through them. So this is me. And hopefully my head's not cut off. I hope, I hope this video is okay. This is me at 31 weeks, 6 days. So basically 32 weeks. I guess the baby's growing. <laughs> In front of the back. I don't think I look too spread out. This side. And from the front. Okay. So, for the gender predictions, I have these little flowers. These are actually soap that my mom had got me. Decorative soaps that look like rose petals. I don't know if you can see them. Now, my bathroom is pink and white, so I only have pink and white. So, we're going to pretend that these white ones are blue. Okay? Okay. <laughs> So as we go through the gender predictions, we'll do a pink petal for a girl and a white petal for a boy. And then we'll count them up at the end. All right. So the first one that I did was the, um, the Chinese gender prediction where it asks you what month did you conceive in and how old were you when you conceived? And based on that, it says boy or girl. So I was 37 when I conceived. I'm still 37 for another couple of weeks. And I conceived in August. And it says, because of that, boy. All right, so we're going to have a white petal. And I'm just going to put them to the side. <laughs> the next one I did was the Mayan calendar gender prediction. And this um, also uses your age in the month that you conceive, but it does like an odd even thing. So it says, was my age an odd or even number um, when I conceived? I was 37, so that's an odd number. And the month that I conceived, I conceived in August, which is an even number. So an odd and an even together means boy. So another white pretending that it's blue petal okay the next one was my craving so it says um if i'm craving 
salty and sour things means boy or if i'm equating more sweet things that means girl so i gave myself the salty sour answer because i didn't have a whole lot of cravings if you remember um in the beginning videos but the one that i did have was popcorn like i actually contemplated going to the movies just to have the popcorn and i was also drinking a lot of grapefruit juice and eating a lot of grapefruit uh, fruit cups and it, the grapefruits just tasted like so much better than it ever had um so i think that's like salty and sour so that also means boy so it's funny I had three boys in a row and 75 or let's say 60 to 75 percent of the people in my who know me in real life has predicted boy so that's interesting um the next one was about the hopefully i'm saying this right the linea negra so that's the line that you get down your belly um when you're pregnant and it says if it goes above the belly button that means boy if it stays below the belly button that means girl so mine didn't come visible for a while and it pretty much is just to the belly button so that would be girl so we got a pink one pink rose petal okay the next one was if i'm carrying high or low so we just did the bump shot and i don't know what you guys think but i think that i am carrying low because even though sometimes i can feel the baby up here the my belly doesn't stick out till down here so to me i'm carrying low and low means boy so another white pretending that it's blue pup. okay um the next one is how has my skin been feeling has my skin been feeling dry and scaly or nice and soft so unfortunately my skin has been feeling very very dry and scaly my hands i feel like i have to lotion them so many times my lips are almost always cracked no matter how much water i seem to drink um and so that means boy so another white pretending to be blue petal boys are the boy ones are uh, adding up over there right um oh i turned my page the wrong way <laughs> okay this prediction says if the heart rate is above 140, that means boy. If it's been below, that means girl. My heart, my not my heart, my baby's heart rate has consistently been in the 150s and 160s um, since the very first time that I heard it. So that would be girl. Okay. And then it says my hair. So has my hair been thick and glossy or is it dull? So my hair has actually been very nice. Even to today, it's kind of like, it's not done because I'm getting it done tomorrow. <laughs> um, but it's definitely thicker and shinier than if you look at my earlier videos. But disclaimer. I don't get perms anymore and my perms have completely grown out and I take vitamin E now which I've been doing for a while which is good for your skin and hair so I don't know how much of that versus pregnancy but either way I have to say thick and glossy which in this case means boy okay now it goes into body hair <laughs> And so it says for body hair, if your body hair has been growing fast, that means boy. If it's been growing at its normal rate, that means girl. So even though the hair on my head has been like growing faster, you can see it's longer and thicker. My body hair has been normal. I haven't had to shave um, 
you know, my legs or bikini or underarms any more frequently. So that would be normal. And so that gets a girl rating. Okay. The next one is pregnancy glow. Do I have a pregnancy glow? Or when people see me, do they ask me, am I okay? That's what it said online. So I have to say um, I have a pregnancy glow. Um, and I say that because that's what people have told me. I don't always feel that way. I feel like I look normal, the same. But so many people have said it. I will give it a vote of glow. But no one has ever actually said to me, like, oh, are you okay? Or been able to visibly see when I don't feel well. Um, so having a glow, yes, means boy. So that's another white petal pretending to be blue. Um, acne, if you have acne through pregnancy, that's a yes. Um, for girl, if you don't, that's for boy. So I have to say, I got acne like two days ago. I came home, I was like, what is going on? I had this bump on my chin, and then there's one over here somewhere, and then there was something on my forehead. So um, I don't know what that's about, but that's very rare. So overall, through the pregnancy, I've not had really any acne. So I'm going to just go with what's been going on in general instead of the last two days. And so I'm going to say acne has been no, which is another boy petal. These boy petals are really uh, adding up. And the next one is what side of the bed do you sleep on? Um, I'm sorry, not what side of the bed. Which side do I sleep on? My left side or my right? So even though you're supposed to sleep more on your left during pregnancy, I try to start out that way. But most of the time, I end up turning to the right to go to sleep. So I would say right. And right side means girl. So pink petal. And the next one was related to morning sickness. So it says if you had a lot of morning sickness, that means girl. If you did not, that means boy. So if you remember from my earlier videos, I did not get morning sickness. I never once vomited and i may have had nausea twice if i even want to call it nausea i might have had just like a uh queasy slightly queasy but then it kind of goes away quick and that was it so i had a lot of anxiety in the beginning because i wasn't sick so no morning sickness for me which is another boy vote okay and we're almost done. The second to last one is, am I being clumsy or have I been graceful? So I have never been graceful my whole life. So I don't know. I might already be biased on this one. Yeah, since a little kid, I have fallen so many times. My legs were like so scraped up. My mom thought I would never be able to wear dresses because I fell literally every day. And I can't say I've grown out of that. I don't fall as often anymore, but I definitely stumble into things, bump into things, kick things over all the time. So being pregnant has made it a little worse because um, I'm slightly, I guess, a little more off balance. So I do tend to bump into stuff more. So clumsy, yes, means boy. So, we got a bunch for a boy, and we're going to do the last one now. And I'm going to try to bring the camera over. So, the last one is the really gross baking soda test. So, you it's supposed to be equal parts baking soda and urine. I did not measure either. I kind of just eyeballing. It was pretty much the end of my baking soda, so I just dumped it in the cup. And you're supposed to pour your urine over it. And if it fizzes, that means boy. If it does not fizz, that means girl. And so I actually captured my urine this morning in my little cup that stayed in my bathroom that I did all use for all of my um, pregnancy tests, all of my ovulation tests, 
And so it's kind of nice to use it now for gender prediction tests. But then I actually brought it down here so that I could show you guys. I've never walked through my house with urine before, uh, which is pretty, pretty gross. But we're doing it for the sake of YouTube to show you guys. Okay, guys. Um, sorry about that. Cut the, the camera cut. So this is part two of the video, but we're going to do the baking soda and urine. Gross, right? Gender reveal test now um so it's supposed to be if it fizzes that means boy if it remains flat or like no change that means girl so here we go and this is so gross I'd like to show you guys <laughs> the urine so that's the baking soda in the throwaway cup and i'm gonna pour the yarn over it and I don't know, did that like fizz a little bit? I don't know. I'm gonna say it fizz. Only because it has those little bubbles there. It wasn't completely flat. So you guys will have to let me know what you think. Is that a fizz or is that a flat? So that and sorry i know i'm like probably really close to the camera now so that was our last of the gender reveal so i'm gonna say that that one was a fizz and a fizz means boy so i'm gonna add another one of our boy petals to the to the pile that i have over here and we're gonna count them up obviously there seems to be more boy than girl so of all the tests we did there were one, two, three, four, one fell, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven predictors said boy, and one, two, three, four said girl. So the results of our old wise tell gender predictor is boy so we'll see I would be happy with boy um, for the fact that I could pass on my dad's name as a middle name but we'll find out in two days so please follow me on Facebook and Instagram and so that you can see the gender reveal <laughs> in real time or close to real time if I can't do it live and I will definitely share on YouTube next week so I'm really excited but we'll know I'll know within the next 48 hours and you guys will know not long after but thanks for watching and sorry it was two videos if you only caught this one go back to the first one to see the other gender predictors and the stats for 31 weeks pregnant thanks for watching guys bye